Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Australia Reads event. Which author is that? Run by Booklands. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we meet today and recognise that this land has always been under their custodianship. I am on the land of the Jagara, Yugara and Yugarabal people. I invite you to write in the chat room the country you are on. I pay my respects to elders past and present. Today we watch the teams go head to head. Which team will win? Record your own answers at home and see how well you know children's literature. Our quiz master for today is Brian Faulkner. He is a well-known author living in the Gold Coast region, originally from New Zealand. Brian is also well known for his story sports sessions and young writers holiday camps, all encouraging young writers. Our competitors are Team A, Pamela Rushby, author of numerous books, including The Mummy Smugglers of Crumbling Castle, Christine Bonges, author of the ever popular Henry Howie Hobson and Intruder and Dust, and Samantha Wheeler, author of many books featuring conservation of wildlife. Team B, we have Michael Jared Bauer, an award winning author of a range of books from The Running Man to Rodney Loses It. Will Kostarkas is a popular author of YA books, with his most recent series being The Monument series. And Dave Lowe, originally from the UK, writes books for emerging readers with titles like My Hamster is a Genius. So let's see who the geniuses are today. Over to you, Brian. All right. Thank you very much, Jenny. And welcome to all our audience and welcome to all our contestants. Now, before we start, we need to test your buzzers. Uh, so we'll just start. We'll go from the top to the bottom. So Dave, can we just test your buzzer? It's your hand in case you were confused. Yep. I think I saw that. Okay. MGB. All right, good, Will. Excellent, that's working, uh, Pam. Got it, Christine. Excellent, Sam. All right, the buzzers are working. We are good to go. All right, so we've got one point on offer for naming the book and one point for naming the author. So if you think you know either of those two things, then throw that hand in the air. I'll try and be fair and see the first hand. Jenny, you might like to keep an eye out as well in case I'm too busy reading and miss the first hand. So if you think you've got the first hand for me, let me know and uh, we'll award the points and which Jenny is going to record for us. Are we ready? Here we go. Our first literary quote. If ever there is tomorrow and when we're not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think. But the most important thing is, even if we're apart, I'll always be with you. Have we stumped the brain's trust with that one? No hands, I haven't seen any Yodi brothers. All right, so we'll throw that to the audience. Do we have any thumbs up from the audience for that one? Looks like we've stumped them all, I think, with that Don't one. Don't even guess the author. Oh, you're going to kick yourselves in the butt when you find out the answer, I think. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think. All right, Sam. Unmute. You're still muted, Sam. Is it Dr. Zeus? It's not. One of his books? It's not Dr. Seuss. It does sound a bit like Dr. Seuss. Yeah, it does. Okay. No, I think we're going to have to move on to our next one. So that was, are you ready? Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. We're sadly lacking in our A.A. A. Milne reading, obviously. All right, here we go. We all can dance, he said, if we find the music that we love. Mm, another tough one. Sorry, right. Brian, what was that? We all can what? We all can dance if we find the music that we love. Do I need to move my microphone a bit closer, maybe? Is that clear? We all can dance, he said, if we find the music that we love. All right, Sam. It's a wild guess, but it's not the book thief. It's not. No, and our audience has no no thumbs up from our audience. You got a hint for us, Brian? Uh, there is an animal in the title. Hmm, quite a tall animal. 
Dave. Unmute, unmute Dave. Is it, um, it's not a picture book about a giraffe, is it? Well, you is need it, to give me a title and... Is it, uh, is it something like Giraffes Can't Dance or something like that? We'll pay that. Can you, can you name the author? Uh, his name's Giles something. Giles. I think we'll pay that as well. Yeah. All right, Giles, I, I presume it's pronounced Andre. I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation. So two points for the boys team. Well done. Team B is... Yeah, this team B, isn't it? The boys team? B for boys? Yep, got it. All right. Here's our third one. Why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Okay, Pam, first. Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll. Uh, yeah, I'll give you one point. All right. And I'm not going to say which point it was. Christine, you had your hand up. No. Okay. Um, Michael. Uh, uh, through the Looking Glass. All right. One point for the boys team as well. So right author, wrong book. It's Through the Looking Glass. Uh, one point for Lewis Carroll, one point for the name of the book. All right. Number four. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. Sam? Sam had her hand up first. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at Sam, but- Sorry, I, I misunderstood. I thought you said Pam. Is it the Velveteen Rabbit? One point, can we name the author? Oh gosh, no, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, open to the entire field then. Does anybody want to give me the author for that from the audience or anywhere? Yeah, it's a tough one. Marjorie Williams is the author for Vel Velveteen Road. Well done though, Sam. Well spotted. Number five. But the children knew, as I'm sure you know, that the worst surrounding in the world can be tolerated if the people in them are interesting and kind. Okay, Sam's having a go. Let's hear it. Charlie in the Chocolate Factory? Not Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Oh, a Roald Dahl, though, of some sort? Not a Roald Dahl. So oh. not even a point for the author, I'm afraid. Okay, open to the field. Anybody want to have a go at that one? Might have been easier if I'd given you the opening line of that one, which is, and here's your clue. If you are interested in stories with happy endings, you would be better off reading some other book. Dave, first. Is it a, like a Lemony Snicket one? No, uh, there's a point for Lemony Snicket. Um, is it um, there's a series of unfortunate... Events well, I think they're all called that. Can you name the actual book? Uh, is it a bad beginning? Or it is a bad beginning. Yes, Two can't. points. Well done. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Number, number six. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Okay, Sam first. Is that a um, Dr. Seuss one now? <laughs> if you keep guessing <laughs> Dr. Seuss, eventually, <laughs> you know, like, a, like a stop <laughs> clock that's right twice a day, you're going to get it right and you yes. get it right. It's Dr. Seuss. Yes, but is it Green Eggs and Ham? It's not Green Eggs and no. Ham. Anyone who would give me oh. the book? Pam. Someone. Yep, Pam, that was you, Pam. Sorry, the Lorax. The Lorax. Okay, one point for Dr. Seuss, one point for the Lorax. There was only orange juice in the fridge. Nothing else you could put on cereal unless you think ketchup or mayonnaise or pickle juice would be nice on your toastios, which I do not. And neither did my little sister, although she has eaten some pretty weird things in her day, like mushrooms and chocolate. 
Mm, okay, we'll open. That's pretty tough. And we'll open that up to is it to the whole field. Okay, Ruth, you've got a point for Neil Gaiman. Can you name the book? Okay, we've got. Hang on, just quickly check. Uh, Ruth, absolutely correct. Suddenly, the milk. Oh, sorry. Oh, actually, almost. I think we've got to pay that one. I think we do. It's it's so close. Fortunately, the milk. There's one word slightly wrong. I, I, it will be nice. We'll pay that. I'll be the I'll be the nice judge. Uh, okay. I'll be issuing a protest before the end of the. <laughs> Take it to the Supreme Court. George and Harold were usually responsible kids. Whenever anything bad happened, George and Harold were usually responsible. That's a great line. Anybody for that one? I think we've lost Sam. All right, it's Christine and Pam, it's down to you for the girls team. Uh, it, was that a hand that I see, see there, Dave? For, yep. It's not uh, like a Captain Underpants one or something, is it? You want to give me the name of the book? Well, I'm going to say um, <laughs> Captain Underpants. I don't know. Is it, is, it, is it a book called Captain Underpants? Oh, we'll pay it. The no. Adventures of Captain Underpants. Can you name the author? Dave Pilkey, his name? Dave Pilkey. Well done. Reading never wears me out. Okay, open to the field. Okay, that's a tough one then. Olivia by Ian Faulkner. Hey, Will, can you hear Brian's questions? I will not say anything sassy in return because I'm a man of character. <laughs> All right, okay, especially for Will then. What if Christmas, he thought, what if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas perhaps means a little bit more? Oh, go on, Sam. You know you want to. <laughs> okay, Christine, it's you. On Sam's behalf, is it Dr. Seuss? Yes. <laughs> uh, and you should be able to work out which of his books it is from. Ooh, oh, okay. something about Christmas. I'm going to go to Will. I'm, I'm going to Will. Here we go. Okay, now I'm worried I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> but is it How the Grinch Stole Christmas? No, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, yes, it is. Yes, it is. You are correct. Okay, well done. Suck it, Michael. <laughs> and this is such a good line. Here are three useful things to know about naked mole rats. One, they are a little bit rat. Two, they are a little bit mole. Three, they are all naked. Sam. Is it um, the toad in the hole? Uh, the toad in the, what it's called? Wind in the willows, you were going to say? Wind in the willows, yeah. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> toad in the hole. <laughs> oh, we, we, we all knew what you meant though we all knew what you meant thank you no, right nobody for that one okay audience naked mole rats okay uh mo willems is the author oh barbara just as i was giving away the author do you want to unmute and say it barbara or Oh, you got it wrong. Okay. Uh, it's called The Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed by Mo Willems. The moment you doubt whether you can fly, you cease forever to be able to do it. Okay. I'm going to come to you in a second, Christine. The reason birds can fly and we can't is simply because that they have perfect faith. For to have faith is to have wings. Christine. No, I was going to say Peter Pan. A little bit more information. Oh, um, J.M. Barry, the author. We'll give you that. Okay, that one. 
and he, uh, what was it, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys or the no, Avengers? I think we'll pay What's it. it for, called? We'll pay it for Peter Pan. Um, uh, it's called Peter, that one. That book is called Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. So really? It's not the original Peter Pan book. So it's, it's uh, you know, one of the many follow-ups written by Robert Patterson. Yeah, can I um, that this, this was my, one of my favourite books when I was a child and I used to read it to my sister at night to make her cry. Uh, and it, it explains, it, it's a prequel. It actually tells you how Peter Pan got the power to fly. Oh. Yeah. And, and then the Peter Pan and Wendy follow on from it. Okay. All right, here we go. And so, for a time, it looked as if all the adventures were coming to an end, but that was not to be. You've really got some hard ones. Anyway. Well, yeah, I think it's not as hard as some of the other ones, actually, Jenny, but there are some difficult ones here. All right, okay, Will. I'm just gonna throw this out there. Is that an Enid Blyton of some sort? It's not, it's not. Sam. Could it be a Narnia? Yeah. Um, one of the Narnia. I need, I Narnia. Need, I need an author and a <laughs> title. Hard. Um, oh, sorry. Um, the Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe. Uh, Return to Narnia. No, no, it was by. I forgot. All right, so we've got a point for Lion, Witch in the Wardrobe. <laughs> and Will. <laughs> Uh, Pam put up. Oh, sorry, Pam. I'm, I believe Pam, I'm told, was first up. First up. So, Pam. C.S. Lewis. He stole that point from you, Will. All right. C.S. Lewis is correct. That's two points for the girls' team. Right. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says some days are like that, even in Australia. Pam. Alexander and the terrible, awful, no good day. Close enough. Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Judith Beost. Two points. Well done. I am a city child. I live at the plaza. Think about it. Live at the plaza. Big clue there. Pam. I think it's Eloise. It is Eloise. Can we name the author? No, I can't. Anybody? Audience. Eloise by K. Thompson. So many things are possible just as long as you don't know they are impossible. All right, audience. Everybody is stumped on the fant. Oh, sorry, I started saying it. Sorry, you can't give me the answer after I say it. I started saying it. it was the Phantom Toll Booth, Norman Juster. All right. You have been my friend. That in itself is a tremendous thing. Okay, uh, with this one, I'll try doing it in the voice of the author, seeing if that helps you at all, okay? It probably won't. You all been my friend. That in itself was a tremendous thing. I'm from Boston. I got a deep voice and I'm from Boston. I don't think my Boston accent was good enough. All right, you're excused for um, not getting that that was E.B. White who I always thought was a lady, but is actually a guy with a really deep voice. Uh, and that was Charlotte's Web. All right, here we go. First hand. Okay, Jenny, watch the hands for me, all right? Hey, uh, Clary had the answer in the uh, chat room. Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. All right. Uh, just be watching the hands very carefully with this one. For, uh, we must be getting to the easy section of the, um, of the game. 
You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. Will was first, I believe. All right. I know that's a Dr. Zeus. Yes. Which one? Oh, it's the, it's, I know the one. I just don't know its name. So, that's not the answer. Oh, well, I got a point, so I don't care. Yeah, oh, so. right. Okay. All right. Uh, I think Pam's still got a hand up. So let's go with the, the name of the book. Places You'll Go. This, give me that again. Places You'll Go. Mm, I think I'll pay it. Oh, the places you'll go. You missed the O. It's quite an important O, but we will give it to you. All right. I love you right to the moon and back. Okay, I'm going to let that go to the audience. Looking for a thumbs up from in the audience. Is it Savage Garden? Not Savage Garden. I thought that was a, a band. Christine. Christine. Every mother on every mother on Facebook on their kid's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> And the book was actually called Guess How Much I Love You. Oh. All right. <clears throat> a person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Jenny, I didn't see who was the first. I think Dave was the first hand up. It's, um, it's Roald Dahl and it's the uh, Twits, I think. Two points. But no one except Lucy knew that as it circled the mast, it had whispered to her, courage, dear heart. Christine. You're muted. I have one job to unmute myself and can't do it. It's not C.S. Lewis, one of the Narnia books. You're, you're telling me that, is it your guess is that it's not C.S. Lewis? Oh, no, my guess is that it is. <laughs> oh, your guess is that it is C.S. Lewis. You will be correct with C.S. Lewis. Can you name the book? The mast. So the one about the ships. Good. A little bit more information. Um, <laughs> then we're going to get a will. Who I believe has answered more questions than Michael. I'm just going to get that in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Christine, can we, can we cross to Will? Okay, Will. Journey of the Dawn Treader. Ooh. Something Dawn Treader. I will give it to you. We'll be nice. Uh, it was the voyage, the voyage of the Dawn Treader. I like people who make me like them. Saves me so much trouble forcing myself to like them. Mm, okay, audience, you're now allowed to have a go. Thumbs up from the audience if you know it. No, it's a classic. That's um, Anne of Green Gables and the author Lucy Maud Montgomery. All right, so I think now we're going to come to a, a part of the game, which I'm going to uh, call opening lines. So this is the same thing, but it's the opening line of the book. All right, if you can identify the book from the opening line. Here we go. The early summer sky was the color of cat vomit. The early summer sky was the color of cat vomit. Have we got a guess for that one? Raise your hand if you think you've got it. Nobody. Audience, you want to have a go? It was a very successful series. Okay, Dave. Sounds like it might be an Andy Griffiths one, by. No, it's not, in fact. It does sound a bit like an Andy Griffiths, doesn't it? No, that was Uglies by Scott Westerfield. All right. Watching for the hands for me, Jenny. First, the colours, 
than the humans? Will. Will. Marcus, is that the book thief? Two points. That's usually how I see things, or at least how I try. Here is a small fact. You are going to die. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try and watch the hands and read the thing at the same time. The year that Buttercup was born, the most beautiful woman... Christine was first. The Princess Bride. Correct for one point. Author. Oh, that hor he was a horrible man. What was his name? Um. <laughs> okay, Dave. Was it like William Goldman or something like that? It was oh, next ah. William Goldman. Uh, not something like that. That's exactly what it was. All right. There is one mirror in my house. It is behind a sliding panel in the hallway upstairs. Our faction allows me to stand in front of it on the second day of every third month, the day my mother cuts my hair. Is that a hand up, Christine? It looks like there's a... Or are you just pointing to something in the ceiling, like there's a spider or something up there? Divergent. Correct. For one point. The Mormon writer. What's Incorrect. her name? Yeah. Oh, you want me to tell Stephanie you? Stephanie Myers? No. <laughs> What's the name of the woman who wrote Divergent? <laughs> okay, we're gonna. Oh no, uh, I think Will was before you, Sam. So we're gonna get a Will. Veronica Roth. Correct. For another point. So, uh, doing, uh, to, get, to get Michael involved, uh, just maybe, maybe uh, read one of Michael's books. He's pretty good on those. <laughs> As Brian started asking questions, I can't hear anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, here's one for you, Michael. Morgarath. Lord of the mountains of rain and night, former Baron of Gorlan in the kingdom of Araluen, looked out over his bleak, rain-swept domain and for perhaps the thousandth time, cursed. Now, I, I didn't see the hand, did you see who was, it was either Michael or Will, but they both put them down again. Let Michael, let Michael, please. Uh, I think Michael's microphone's busted. You have to hold the hold the. Try button. again, Michael. You have to hold the button down, Michael. Oh, didn't you hear my answer? <laughs> and I uh, no, I I don't know. Ask Will. Okay. Does somebody know? Is okay. Is, well, is it Tolkien? No, no, it's not. Oh, I thought Gorlam would have been a big big clue, but uh, obviously not as big a clue as I thought. All right, so uh, audience, Gorlam. Anybody want to have a go at that? Nobody? All right. Uh, the book, uh, is, the author is John Flanagan. The book is The Ranger's Apprentice, The Ruins of Gorland, the first Ranger's Apprentice book. All right. Watching those hands for me, Jenny. One afternoon when Bruno came home from school, he was surprised to find Maria, the family's maid, who always kept her head bow bowed and never looked up from the carpet, standing in his bedroom, pulling all his belongings out of the wardrobe and packing them in four large wooden crates, even the things he'd hidden at the back that belonged to him and were nobody else's business. Now, the character's name's a huge clue. Bruno. All right, we have a guest from the audience. Let's go to the audience, Jackie. Is it the boy in striped pajamas? That's a point. And the author? John Boyne. John Boyne, two points for Jackie. The boy in the striped pajamas. Once upon a time, there were three children, Joe, Bessie, and Fanny. They lived with their mother and father in a little cottage deep in the country. And Will is very excited to answer this one. So uh, obviously, this it is a book. It's Dean and Blyton and, oh, I don't know which one it is. I'm going to go with Enchanted Wood. Not the Enchanted Wood, but we'll give okay, you a guess because we've got the Enid Blyton. But I know that, I know what it is now, but someone else. Oh, well, we have an answer from the audience. So, so tell us what it is, uh, Will. 
Uh, well, I know it, it's the magic faraway tree because yeah. they moved in the first book. So the second book. Mm. Right. Uh, okay. Clearly a beginning of Blanton fan, which I am too. So that's all good. So, all what, right. so what score are you giving him, Brian? Was that a one? I think, I think one for Will and one for whoever it was. I didn't see who it was that answered in the audience. Just put your hand up, whoever got that answer for us. Was it Barbara? Uh, Clary. Oh, it was, okay. Got it. All right. Here we go. Uh, very, very easy one. At the dawn of the 20th century, no one would have believed that the earth was being watched by creatures smarter than we are. I won't try and do Richard Burton. Oh, Sam, I think you just snuck that in just ahead of Christine. This is really silly and it's probably not. Was it Star Wars? No. no oh, I don't Wars. know. Christine, I It was you. just a little bit silly, but we'll go with it. Uh, Christine, you're next. <laughs> War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds by... Oh. H.G. Wells? H.G. Wells, two points. Oh, my first two-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another one that might be a good, easy two-pointer. A long time ago, when all the grandfathers and grandmothers of today were little boys and little girls or very small babies or perhaps not even born, Ma, Pa and Ma and Mary and Laura and baby Carrie left their little house in the big woods of Wisconsin. Now, I didn't see who was first. It was either Michael or Christine. Christine. It was Christine. Oh, sorry, Michael. Sorry, Mike. A uh, Little House on the uh, Prairie. By? Laura, no, Laura Ingalls was a little girl in it. By Michael. <laughs> you want to take this one? All right. Michael, do you want to give us the author, Michael? Well, I thought it was Laura Ingalls, but... Wasn't Laura Ingalls the girl? Okay, I don't think we've played it. Audience, daughter. tell me the name. Audience, somebody in the audience, tell me the name of the author. Or well, Pam's got it. Okay. Laura Ingalls Wilder. Correct. Oh. You were right. It was Laura Ingalls. We just needed the Wilder on the end of it. Two thirds of one point. <laughs> All right. Now, looking very carefully for anyone who can answer this one. Call me Ishmael. Okay, Michael. Uh, I think that'd be Moby Dick. By Just one of your books. Now you're right; it's Moby Dick, and and it was written by Herman Melville. Two points. Two points. Well done. When he was nearly thirteen. My brother, Jem, got his arm badly broken. Oh, now, who was first there? Was that Christine or Will? I Will. Think. Will was in first? You're muted. Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Two points. It was seven o'clock of a very warm evening in the Sioni Hills when Father Wolf woke up from his day's rest, scratched himself, yawned, and spread out his paws one after the other to get rid of the sleepy feeling in their tips. Christine. Wild guess. Going with Jungle Book. By? Um, uh, Rudyard Kipling. Two points. Well, well done. Now, I am going to be very strict on the next one. I'm going to ask for a correct answer. I'm not going to be nice and just allowed if you get it close. You have to give me word for word the correct answer for this one. On Friday, June 12th, I woke up at six o'clock and no wonder it was my birthday. But of course, I was not allowed to get up at that hour. So I had to control my curiosity until the quarter to seven. Michael. This is a guess, um, but it's not uh, the curious incident of the dog in the night time. No, that's not. No, no. Uh, quite a long way apart in terms of years uh, and many other things. But completely wrong. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, it, it isn't. I, I will give you a clue. It is a diary. Uh, looking for a diary. 
And I'll give you another clue. It's not the diary of a wimpy kid. Okay, I think Will just snuck in there. This could be incredibly wrong. It's not the diary of Anne Frank, is it? I'm not going to pay that because although it's commonly called that, that's not actually the name of the book. <laughs> I did say I wanted a correct answer on this one. Pam, what's the actual title of that book? Pam. Diary of a Young Girl. The Diary of a Young Girl is the title of the book by Anne Frank. Sorry, Will, I did say in advance we were going to be really tough on that one. So where are you? Do I at least get the author? Uh, yeah, I think, yes, you did give us the author. So, yep, yes, a point for the author, absolutely. When I wake up, the other side of the bed is cold. Michael. Uh, this is uh, Hunger Games. It is, by? That woman who wrote it. Yes, correct, but we're not paying that. Hunger Games by Will. Suzanne Collins. Correct. Bonus point. Why is the other side of the bed cold? Who's not there? Michael. Uh, her sister's not there. Whose name is? Sparrow. <laughs> oh, we'll pay the sister. The name was Prim or Primrose. Okay. When Mary Lennox was sent to Misselthwaite Manor to live with her uncle, everybody said, Pam? Secret Garden, Francis Hodgson Burnett. Two points right there. Now, with the next one, I'm going to delete out the name of a person because it would kind of give it away. So instead of this person's name, uh, I'm going to say Will Kostakis whenever that person's name comes up. All right. So here we go. Will Kostakis was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Will Kostakis, without pictures or conversations? Pam. Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll. I was actually looking for Will Kostakis in Wonderland, but we will pay that. All right, yes. Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll. Okay. Oh, no, that's too easy. Brilliant opening line from a book. I wish I'd thought of it. Here we go. Gordon Edgeley's sudden death came as a shock to everyone, not least himself. Gordon Edgeley's sudden death came as a shock to everyone, not least himself. All right, let's open that up to the audience. Uh, looks like I'm the only Skullduggery Pleasant fan here, unfortunately. That was Skullduggery Pleasant, the first book uh, by Derek Landy. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting into the really tough ones. I was walking down the road and I saw a donkey. He haw, and he only had three legs. Sam first. The winky wonky donkey. I will pay it. It's just, it's just called the wonky donkey. Uh, can you name Would you like me to sing the song? Go on. <laughs> no. Oh, we were looking forward to it. I was walking down the road. No. Um, I don't know who wrote it, sorry. Okay. Anybody know? Uh, Kiwi guy, his name is Craig Smith. Down on the valley, there were three farms. The owners of these farms had done well. They were rich men. They were also nasty men. Dave Lowe. Um, is it... Um... Fantastic Mr. Fox by Roald Dahl. Two points. Most motor cars are conglomerations. This is a long word for bundles of steel and wire and rubber and plastic and electricity and oil and gasoline and water. 
and the toffee papers you pushed down the crack in the back seat last Sunday. Did you have that one, Christine? I saw the hand go up. Complete guess, but it's where's Sam? You know, toad in the hole. <laughs> is that wind in the willows? <laughs> it's, not. it's not. Is it? No, it's not toad in the hole. Um, wind in the willows. Not no no it's not not wind in the willows either. No, completely completely on a different planet. Uh, big clue, big clue. The author of the book, who I'm not going to tell you who it is is way more famous for writing a series of adult novels than he is for writing children's novels. Pam? Chichiri Bang Bang, Ian Fleming? Correct. Oh, of course. Well done. And well I think done. we have your hands up. Yes, we had some guesses from the audience that knew that as well. All right. Okay, we've got a couple more here. Some really, really good ones. This is the strange story of Miss Cecilia Undergarment and the Black Lions of Northwood. It is probably not true, but who really knows for sure? Christine. Is the author Brian Faulkner? <laughs> one point. I had to throw one of mine in there somewhere, didn't I? One point, can you name the book? I know the it's audience. Northwood, isn't it? Northwood, two points. Okay, well done. <laughs> When the doorbell rings at three in the morning, it's never good news. Stump the brain cells. Or is that a hand up? That's not a hand up. Are oh, you just repositioning your camera, Sam? Okay. All right. When the doorbell rings at three in the morning, it's never good news. Is the opening line of Stormbreaker by Anthony Horowitz. Okay, we'll go easy. These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. Dave? I feel like a bit of a one-trick pony here. I think I've only read uh, Roald Dahl books in my own ones, um, but it's um, Charlie the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Correct. Yeah, you are certainly proving to be the Roald Dahl expert. I think there's no. Yeah, question. it's just Roald Dahl and Brian Faulkner. They're, they're, my, they're my two heroes. <laughs> yeah, good on you. In the light, and now I've got to read this correctly. <clears throat> In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Pam. Very hungry caterpillar, Eric Carle. Two points. Well done. Tried very hard to put you off. I'm making it sound like a horror. But no. Okay. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. Dave, Lo you do read things that are not by Roald Dahl. Yeah, it's only got about 50 words in, so it doesn't count. It's um, Where the Wild Things Are by... Um... Not Roald Dahl. Man. Um... I should know this, shouldn't I? Pam will know it. Um, Quite hard, by the way, Michael. Yeah, okay, you. Pam, we'll give you the answers for the, the, uh, for the author. Sendak, Maurice Sendak. Maurice or Morris, or however you pronounce it, Sendak. Where's Papa going with that axe? Said Fern to her mother. Who was first, Jenny? Pam was first? Charlotte Webb. And I can't remember the author. Okay, I think we'll give Sam the, the next. E.B. White? E.B. White. If you're into audio books, by the way, um, E.B. White does his own version. He, he does the audio book of Charlotte's Web, and it's just brilliant. It's fantastic. Uh, all right. A couple more, and then we're going to be just about done, I think. Somebody's going to get this really quickly. Sophie couldn't sleep. <laughs> All right, Dave. I just I just read Roald Dahl a lot because I'm hoping the magic kind of uh, eventually rubs off. Right? <laughs> that's the uh, that's the BFG. Correct. Oh, now we're going for a little bit older. Late in the winter of my seventeenth year, 
my mother decided I was depressed, presumably because I rarely left the house, spent quite a lot of time in bed, read the same book over and over, ate infrequently, and devoted quite a bit of my abundant free time to thinking about death. Mm. Young adult author, very popular, Christine. Unmute. Then will if you can't. You need to unmute though. Are you? Is this sign? You, you're trying to sign the. <laughs> okay, Christine, we can't hear you, so I'm going to go to Will. It was the Fault in Our Stars by. Oh wait, what's his name? Will Castell. Oh. Oh, I know it. Ah, oh, he annoys me. I mean, I am a huge fan. This is being recorded. <laughs> well, he's, he's actually watching right now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, it's not John. It's not. It's it, John. Is John. Oh, it is John. It is John. It is John. Ah, oh, John. Uh, and I'm not going to look at the chat. Oh, um. Oh, and he's got the annoying brother too. Oh, this yeah, so and they do that kind of radio. Well, who's the, uh, who's the American one? And it's a colour. Uh, John Green. Yes. 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 I got there without any help. What are the. Oh, yeah, the colour thing didn't help at all. No, absolutely not. Okay. Two points or two points. All right, two points. Do I get any points for having appeared on one of John Green's vlogs? No. But wow, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, minus, minus points for bragging. You get. You get what blog were you on? He doesn't know any answers, but ask him about himself and suddenly it's unmute. <laughs> oh, we didn't even ask about himself. He just... Let's move on. Let's move on. Here we go. The sun did not shine. Pam. Right in the hat, took the shoes. I really can't put you off by doing these, these sort of horror reads, can I? The sun did not shine, it was too wet to play, so we sat in the house on that cold, cold, wet day. Two points. All right. A mouse took a stroll through the deep, dark wood. A fox saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. I did see your hand go up, uh, Dave. We were just embarrassed and that you know all of these. No, no, I, I love that book. Uh, it's the uh, it's the Gruffalo um, by Bye. Um, by um, I'm going to name drop here. I've I've met her too, Michael. You know, I, I, I've hobnobbed with the rich and famous. But, uh, yeah, you've been on her blog. And Axel Scheffler. Well done. Well done. In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines, lived twelve little girls. Now, a lot of hands went up. Jenny, did you see who was first? It might have been Pam, might have been Christine. I think it was Jackie. Uh, Jackie's not actually on our team, so we're going to go to Jackie after. If, if uh, Christine and Pam, do you think it was Christine? I think it was Christine. Yeah, I think it was Christine. Madeline. Bye. Now, this is where the real point comes from. Who can name Over them? to you, Pam. <laughs> Madeline, bye. <laughs> Uh, audience, can we uh, can we name the author of that book? It was a tough one. Uh, Ludwig, I'm going to try and say this right. Bemelmans, Bemelmans, Bemelmans. I'm not quite sure. Hi, I am the bus driver. Uh, listen, I've got to leave for a little while, so can you watch things for me until I get back? Thanks. Oh, and uh, remember. Uh, Michael first. Is it, <laughs> is it that picture book about the pigeons? Yeah, we do need extra title. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Correct. By Mo Willems. Mo Willems. Two points. He got one. Celebration. The hottest day of summer so far was drawing to a close and a drowsy silence lay over the large square houses of Privet Drive. <laughs> Will's in first. Unmute because uh, that's really obviously a struggle. All right. No, give us the author first. The Harry Potters. Um, 
You give us the author and get that point. Oh, J.K. Rowling has a point. Um, all oh, right, so it's is it? Heat of the Summer. So it's, I'm tossing up. Okay, it's not, it's not Goblet of Fire because that's the flashback one. Uh, it's not, um, could it be Order of the Phoenix? It could. Well done, two points. Last one. This is our last uh, opening line, our last question of the game. Then we're going to do some point tabulation. Is he here actually won? It, unless you nobody gets it, in which case we'll, we'll have one last one. It was seven minutes after midnight. The dog was lying on the grass in the middle of the lawn in front MGB, of Mrs. MGB. MGB. Its eyes were closed. Was that MGB? Was that first, or Jenny? I didn't see. Yes, okay. This one's got to be the curious incident of the dog in the night time. One point. Um, by... No, it's gone. Pass it over to you, Christine. Anybody want to give me the author for that? Audience, you can jump in. Uh, almost, Ruth, not Mark Halpin. Mark. Mark. Nobody. The answer, there it is from Barbara. Mark Haddon and from uh, K.R. Clary. So Mark Haddon. Hey, guys, that was fantastic. I, I've got no idea how the points went. I had a feeling that the, the girls were kind of quicker and getting in early on, but then I think the boys kind of started coming back later on and uh, started earning a lot of points. Jenny, have you been totaling it all up as well? Oh, we have, and Shirley's been telling you as we go, and it was nail-biting because when we got to that last question, we knew it was a tie. And wow. then, then uh, Michael came in and bit the girls by one point by answering with that title. So amazingly, the boys won. What's amazing about that? Okay, <laughs> amazingly, the boys won. Uh, girls, we now, you now need to give the boys a really big round of applause. Uh, all right. Oh, In fact, well audience, done, boys. I, I think we should now give all of our authors a really big round of applause for girls for trying so hard and embarrassing themselves so badly. And so, a big round of applause for all of our authors. Excellent. And if you're on the uh, the audience, just you know, there's a little. That's the one. You press that button, and it's, and, I, uh, and I can say that in the audience, that K.R. Clary scored the most. So well done. Congratulations, K.R. Clary. Yeah. Well, that was fun. I'm going to pass back to you, Jenny. So if there's any okay. wrap up you'd like to do now, but, uh, that was that was really good fun. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So I'd like to thank you all for coming into this session. It really was a, a load of fun. I hope we haven't given away too many clues. If people play it back, we can't reuse some of these things for other things. Maybe. Oh, dear. oh well. Who goes? I'm going to.